I have good news for you. This revival you see will not be aborted. You know, I had last Sunday, somebody laughed at me in his church and called me a thief and called me a rat claiming to give birth to an elephant. <laughs> no, my damn thief. Love does not envy. Love is not jealous. Look at your Bible. Look at it. It's not jealous and envious. Hmm? He said somebody way big pass you. Now you're picking. <laughs> okay. John the Baptist was the one who baptized Jesus. Is it because of Jesus? Okay, you ordained the man, but the man don't be passing. <laughs> it's just jealousy. Just what? And some of you listen to such verses. Please. If you see that thing, pass it. In one small corner where you are, you are not afraid. These are men with results. They are men with what? Okay, we are all results. <laughs> They brag about houses. They brag about ministerial success to be congregation size, to be cars, estates, money. And they say because they have all of that, me, I don't have that. I'm a failure and they're a success. So their definition of ministerial success is based on material acquisition. And they forget that Jesus said, beware of covetousness. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses. I feel like I'm teaching now. A man is not defined by car and house and money and clothes. You know, the disciples of Jesus, who we are copying in ministry today, did not brag about cars, did not brag about jets, did not brag about houses, did not even brag about the sizes of their congregation. The only thing they brag about was Christ. Christ is our treasure. That is what we have. And if a man of God who is supposed to be happy that he has Jesus is not satisfied with Jesus, is defining himself by car and house and money and all of that, he is too carnal for anybody to model him. He is far from the truth of the gospel. And he's a bad model for ministers of the gospel. If I'm teaching, say I hear you. Look at, look at it, look at it, look at it. Luke 12, 15. Let me answer him a bit. Luke chapter 12 verse 50. PJ read for me. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Give me the message of that Luke chapter 12. Message translation. Message. Speaking to the people, he went on. Take care. Protect yourself against the least bit of greed. Life is not defined by what you have, even when you have a lot. Life is not defined by what you have, even when you have a lot. The disciples of Jesus did not brag about what they had. Look at what their joy was. Acts chapter 5 verse 41. The joy of the apostles who gave us the gospel. Our models in the Bible. Look at their joy. Read for me PJ. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. They were counted worthy to suffer shame. What shame? They were persecuted for preaching Christ. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, brother. I'm not ashamed of it. Cars don't define us. Sizes of congregation don't define us. Is it good to have a crowd? If the crowd know what they are doing, it's a good thing. But sizes of congregation don't define us. Otherwise, Jesus was a failure. Because in one day, thousands left him. Paul at the end of his ministry everybody forsook him but yet he says I have fought a good fight I have finished the course and there's a crown of righteousness kept for me by the Lord Jesus so crowd don't define us shoes don't define us cars don't define us estates don't define us listen carefully that is what Satan offered to Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 he offered to him houses and cars and Jesus rebuked him and what Jesus turned down is what preachers today are flaunting as ministerial success you can tell where the church is exactly in first Timothy chapter 6 verse 3 look at it first Timothy chapter 6 verse 3 PJ first Timothy chapter 6 verse 3 read for me if any man teach otherwise and consent not to hold some words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Anybody that plays down on the doctrine of Christ. Next verse. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings. He is proud, knowing nothing. Next verse. Verse 5. 
perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such, withdraw thyself. From such pastors, withdraw yourself. Don't listen to them. They have nothing to offer you other than greed, avarice, and the doctrine of Balaam, which actually is measuring a man's value by material things. He said, destitute of the truth. Look, give me the message of that verse 5. Message translation, PJ. Message, First Timothy 6, 5. Eventually, there's an epidemic of backstabbing and truth is but a distant memory. They think religion is a way to make a fast buck. So they are using their Bible to be making money. You know what I'm talking about. And then they now say, don't mind Damina. Damina is full of bitterness. Damina is envy. When I see him preaching, I say, this man has gone into bitterness. He has gone into heavy envy. Many of you don't know. That man was at the top. But he sees small boys rise up. So the thing, he can't stand it. That's the biggest problem he has. This scripture is for him. Jealous and envy. He's so jealous of... The, check all the money he's attacking at the men who are at the top. Everybody rising is not a problem to him. Was me, envious of what? The templates you people are using for your materialistic gospel. Some of the templates, I'm the one that gave to you people. What is there to envy? Envy lying to people in the name of the Bible and collecting their money. Lying to them that if they don't pay tithe, they will not go to heaven. Lying to them that the size of your giving determines the weight of your greatness. Lying to them that you must pay tithe 50 years in advance. Lying to them that if you give to the poor, you will be like the poor. Is that what I'm envying? Or envying, arranging miracles, crutches and wheelchairs all brand new, which we don't see anymore. Is that what I'm envious of? There's nothing there to envy. I am satisfied with Jesus. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. I can somebody shout glory. What is there to envy? The Bible in the book of, of, of 2 Corinthians 10, 12 says, they comparing themselves with themselves, they are not wise. In 1 Corinthians 4, 5, it says, judge nothing before the time. It's too early now to be saying, this is a great man of God. This is the biggest man of God. It's too early. Judge nothing before the time. We are still in the journey of ministry. And one day we will see Jesus. Then shall we know which man is the great man of God. But those of you that are comparing themselves by the sizes of your congregation, Bible says you're not wise. You're foolish. And I don't want to model after a foolish man. And those of you that are using money to define preachers, you are more carnal than the devil. More kind of, you don't even know anything. You are far, you are destitute of the truth. You are far from God. The true word of a man of God is not crowd and size, it's the message. Somebody said, No, people are right. I said, They waste your time. I go, People are right. <laughs> Me, no, pre tight. <laughs> they waste your time. I go, pre tight. But you know that transactionary gospel they are preaching is the same thing with selling of soap. All of them are in the same WhatsApp group. Selling soap, River Jordan, uh, Pool of Bethesda, uh, Pure Water. Holy water, pure candle, holy candle, scented rice, scented gari, anointed uh, palm oil. All of them are in the same WhatsApp group. You understand? Charm, talisman, they are all in the same WhatsApp group. Utoto, all of them, they are in the same WhatsApp group. I'm sure you have heard everything the man of God have to say and I'm sure you paid serious attention to everything he has to say. I'm not going to say much. I'm not going to talk much about all he has to say because I'm not going to even be analyzing anything. Sometimes I, I see a lot of content creators, they try to victimize some people. They try to take side when they listen to the messages like this. They try to uh, uh, judge. They try to condemn. They try to say all manner of things. That is not what I'm here to do. I want to ask us first of all to pray for our men of God, to pray for our pastors. It is important for us to understand that a lot of them are losing their way. Mind you, I'm not saying that this pastor you have listened to, this man of God you have listened to, have lost his way. I'm just letting you know that there is an attack on the body of Christ that we need to stand up rise up together and pray we need to start interceding for our men of god a lot is happening in the body of christ and that is why you are seeing this person is attacking this person this person is attacking this person this person is correcting this person that person is correcting this person i'm not saying that all those things correcting people is bad i'm not saying no 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 it's not bad at all but you see if i correct you and you come back you fight me you try to be right you try to counter everything i've said even when you know is the truth then there is a problem there is a problem and you see i always say this if uh, your brother makes a mistake or your fellow pastor or fellow leader makes a mistake me i feel that it is important for us to 
put call through to those people and say, oh, my brother, my sister, this thing you said, that thing you said, I don't think that's the right way you should say it. I don't think that's the right thing to do. You bring a superior argument. If that person actually has sense, that person will take your, your, your advice. But you see, this issue we are having right now, this person is coming out to say, okay, this person is fake. This person is coming out to say this person is not a, 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 a good man of God or this person is not a, like this one, a, what he's teaching is not the right this thing. I don't know why things are like that, are, are happening like that in the body of Christ. There is so much problem. There is so much confusion. There is so much trouble right now in the body of Christ. And that is why it is important for us to start praying for our leaders. Like I said, I'm not going to stand here or sit here to say, oh, this man of God is correct. That man of God is correct. This one is that. That one is that. No. What I want us to do is that we should be praying for them. Because sitting here to take side to say oh i think what this pastor said is correct i think what that pastor said is correct that's not the way we should go that's not what the way we should go you see a lot of things happening right now okay uh this pastor this pastor have said that pastor is is not good is fake or is teaching the wrong message all those things they are things that for me will never promote love in the body of christ because you see Ego we set in, pride we set in, a lot of things we set in because I always tell people when you say this person is a man of God, it is important for you to recognize that there is a man before the God. I'm not saying that it is bad to openly rebuke, but you see, when you openly rebuke people like that, most people don't know how to take it. Especially when they are leaders, they will hardly uh, uh, accept it. If you look at what has been going on recently between Dr. Ebedamina, a man I love and respect so much, and uh, Dr. Paul Lenecha, another man of God I love and respect so much. You, see, you, you look at that type of fight, the thing happening between them, you, you ask yourself that why? Why can't these people sit together and try to solve their differences, try to resolve their, their, their differences instead of coming online to fight? Because some of the things happening there, eh, it is the reason why a lot of people are actually seeing Christianity as a joke. It is Christianity actually is a lifestyle, not a religion. So if our lifestyle is to quarrel amongst ourselves, then what do you want to tell somebody that is actually not a Christian? That if you come and become a Christian and you adopt this type of li our lifestyle, you'll be quarreling with your brother, you'll be fighting with your brother. I've never seen, I don't know, if you have seen, please, you can drop it in the comment section. Let me go and check it out. If you have seen an imam, Quarreling with another imam, please let me know. You can drop the link to the video in the comment section or to where it is happening. I've actually not seen it that this Muslim leader will come out to say this. This other Muslim leader is saying rubbish and all the rest. All this thing happening in the body of Christ. If for me, I think it must stop, and I think it is an attack. It is an attack on the body of Christ. A lot of things we need to try our best to be interceding for our pastors because if we continue to say okay let's allow things be like that let's keep watching things may co will continue to scatter because some of, some people may not feel comfortable again to go out to win souls for christ because if i win so and i bring them to church and the soul i have won is seeing my leader my pastor quarreling with another pastor how will I not tell the, the soul that I've brought to church, the soul that I've won that uh, 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 Christianity is peaceful, that if you become a believer, that we love one another? All what is happening right now, I don't see love. I don't see any reason why we'll be condemning each other. This and that is happening, that is happening. I don't see the reason for all these things. I don't see the reason for all those things. So it is important for us to pray. It is important for us to pray because if we continue like this, I don't know what the future holds, and I don't know what we are teaching the one, the people that are coming up. Love must lead. Jesus commanded us that we should love one another. He said we should even love for, uh, love our enemy and pray for all those people, even the people that have hurt and persecuted us. Jesus did not encourage that we should be fighting one another. So I don't know uh, where all these things are coming from. And that is why I am calling on all believers that we should do well to pray for our men of God. Don't take sides. Don't take sides. We have listened to this uh, message right now, this uh, teaching from this uh, man of God. Yes, for some of you it is lovely, it is good. But you see, we have to be looking at the bigger picture. 
and we have to make Christ the focus. Christ should be this, at the center of everything we are doing. So please, let us do well to be praying for our men of God, be praying for our pastors and, and all the rest. They need prayer because they are men of God does not mean that they don't need prayer. They need prayer. So it is important for us to be praying for them. Let us be interceding for them. Let us be, be like, be, let us remember them in, in our prayers. Because what is happening right now for me is actually not the best. Sometimes I'm ashamed when I hear, see this pastor fighting this pastor, that pastor fighting that pastor. I, I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy it. All I want to do is to enjoy the message, the gospel of Christ. Enjoy it. As long as Christ is love, God is love. So we must learn to love. Whenever, where there is an absence of love, Christ is not there. Because Christ and God is love. So we must learn to love one another, love our neighbor. It is only these things, when we love people, that is when people can say, ah, of a true, these people are true followers of Christ. So I am begging us, regardless of uh, where you, the camp you belong to, whether I belong to um, this uh, a, camp A, or camp B, camp C, please, 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 the, let us learn to love one another. It is important for us to do so. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please do have to subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notification bell. So whenever I post another video, you'll be notified. If you turn a subscriber, please do me a favor. Share with our social media platform. Share with your friends and love those. God bless you as you do so. I will see you in the next one. You are blessed. I have good news for you. Your will is being written. I am what I am by the grace of God. As long as that grace does not fail, Satan will never fail. This revival you see will not be aborted.